I'm headed to New York City. And funny enough, I actually shot a video last year in New York City. So we're going to go into that right now. And this video that I shot in New York is so sick. It is so good. You're going to really, really like it. But here's what I want to tell you. I'm actually going to be in New York this week. I'm heading to New York this week. And I'm going to be running a completely free event. Look, you give me a couple hours of your time. I'm going to help you to make so much more cash, get such better social results, get spiritually tapped in, and learn how to be somebody who's deeply connected to your purpose. We're going to go so deep on this. We're going to network in real life. You're going to meet me in person. We're going to go out at nighttime. It's going to be so much fun. A completely free seminar. All that you got to do is click the link below. It's going to be this week coming up. So that being the case, because I'm going to be in New York, we're going to be shooting into this video, which I shot in New York City. I'm excited to meet you there. And by the way, while I'm on the East Coast, I'm also going to be going to Boston and Washington, D.C. So if you're in Boston or Washington, D.C., we will actually be in your city the following weeks. Funny enough, though, if I were you, if I'm in Boston or Washington, D.C., I'd come to all of them. I'd actually drive out to the New York one or fly out to the New York one. I'd fly to the Boston one. I'd fly to the D.C. one. If I were you, I'd come to all of them. They're all different, and they're all freaking amazing. After that, I'm going to be shooting over to Austin, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, and Vegas for the coming year for free events. And if for whatever reason you can fly on a lot, I'd recommend that you do, and you just want to get the core curriculum, like the very, very best lessons from the core curriculum, what you can also do is go into www.higherpurposeprogram, which I've also got linked below. It actually has the basis of the core curriculum from the free event right Right there as well as access to a free group and a bunch of free support inside of a completely free step-by-step -step program so my best bet for you would be to come out in real life and fly in and meet me and network and do all that and do q a but if you also want to learn you can go to higher purpose program and get the best lessons right now click this thing below i'll see you at the event in new york and now we will shoot into a video that i shot in new york and i think you're gonna love it a lot let's go so i'm sitting here with my buddies brandon carter and shane tyler milson brandon if you look him up this dude is just one of the biggest ballers you'll ever see. You need to go to his channel right now. It's for fitness and ketogenic diets. He also teaches how to make money. And Shane does, in my view, some of the best herbs I've ever seen in my life. I view it as in league with Dragon Herbs, which is like the most old school herb company. Yeah. And I get a feeling from your chaga that I don't get even from Dragon Herbs. I mean, it is the best. And, and when I tried it, I was shocked, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm a hard sell. And... The reason why I want to invite them here today, we're sitting out here in New York City, is because we want to talk about how food affects your personal growth and affects your general success in life. Now, I've eaten way too many carbs in recent years, so I'm fat, but I haven't been sick since 2012, and I've also eaten in a way that's allowed my mind to operate for peak performance, okay? I've been working, for example, for weeks now. I'm coming off a seminar. I haven't been to bed yet. I'm out here, and I can knock out videos like this because I've optimized food for peak performance, although I need to be learning from them to do even better. Brand is also optimized for that as well, but also for getting super ripped, super jacked. And then Shane is actually optimized for all sorts of adaptogenic aspects of food. So I thought that while I had them here, I might as well just take advantage because they're part of my mastermind and people who I'm actively learning from. And I wanna get some of their take, maybe even some basics of ketogenic diets and also some basics of herbs. And then people could walk away with really just some new information. I even wanna keep learning from you guys as well. Yeah, for sure. Um so y'all know I, I do I do keto and I'm a big proponent. It's, it's, maybe it's not for everyone. Maybe not. Um, and you can definitely get in great shape without mm -hmm. being on keto. For me, I went uh, keto. It was more for health reasons. You know, uh, my, my cholesterol was really high. And I went and they tried to put me on drugs, statin drugs. And Which I was can, like, by the way, rot your brain, right? Yeah, yeah. They can make you dementia. I know because my stepdad went on statins and he came back looking whacked out yeah. of his mind. Yeah. Exactly, exactly what happened. So, and, and I was aware of that. So I decided to try to uh, to heal heal it naturally. Mm -hmm. And I and there's a lot of studies that show that keto, the uh, ketogenic diet uh, is very beneficial in that regard. So what I did was I went on that and then I just noticed. Wait a minute, hold up. I feel different. You know, I feel different. I got I got more energy. It, it seems like I don't need as much sleep, you know, uh, my, my, my focus is more clear, you know, and my, my skin was clear and it was easier for me to stay ripped. So I, I, I noticed that for me, right, and a lot of my um, my clients and people I've worked with, you know, this may not be everyone, but when I went, when I, when I cut the carbs down, I got all those benefits, right? So like you can get ripped if you just want to get ripped or jack, you can do that with any kind of diet, it will work. But the ketogenic diet or, or just lower carbs seems to have some additional benefits that you can't get from a traditional just calor caloric restriction. Right. And and it and so what is the ketogenic diet for someone who's not familiar with it? Well, I clearly need to become familiar with it. So right, right. So like you know, it, it's basically a, a, a macronutrient ratio where you know, you focus on your macros where you want to get What's seventy to seventy five percent. Um, 
fats. So that's what your calories should be consist of. And then 20 to 25% uh, 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 protein and like you know, around five, Five percent carbs, uh, and then you, I can play with that. You know, I, I when I, when I'm doing it right. A lot of times, people don't have a lot of energy on keto, right? When they first start, because they think it's just all bacon and butter, right? And then they wonder why they don't feel good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they wonder they just eat a, a pound of meat and wonder why they don't feel good. Uh, sometimes, you know. Uh, but when when you get that, high, it's not a high protein diet; it's a high fat diet, and that's the difference. And the fat gives you that energy. So you, I don't. I don't want to monopolize this conversation. But when when your carbohydrates, when you when you when you're eating a traditional Western diet with higher car carbohydrates, what it, what happens is your body is using glucose for fuel. It's converting those carbohydrates in, into some glucose or, or glycogen. And when your glycogen levels go above 110, your pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin, and that's that's the that's the hormone. That's, that's why you get tired after like Thanksgiving or like a big meal. It's not the tryptophan. Yeah. It's, the, it's the insulin spike, right? So when you're on a, a ketogenic diet or even just a yeah, when you're on a ketogenic diet in the absence of those carbs your body has to have a new fuel source and it starts converting fats into something called ketones. And those ketones are a different fuel source for your body, but more really for your brain too. And, and the thing is, once you've adapted to it, it takes this adaptation phase. You get tired for a while, right? And initially you can get really tired, you know, and, and there's supplements you can take to, to uh, mitigate that, right? You can take some uh, exogenous ketones or something while your body's learning how to produce it. Your body can only hold so much glucose. That's why your, your, your energy levels you know, there's peaks and valleys throughout the day, right? You know, he's why you get tired after lunch. But when you're on keto, it's different. Your body, your, your body's has been trained to run off fat, and you're never going to run out of fat. Even like someone like me, I'm like nine percent body fat, but it's I still have enough fat to live off of in my body for like weeks. You know what I'm saying? And so like your energy levels are more sustained, and then your hormones are more balanced because you don't have these insulin spikes every time you eat. Does that make sense? That's why that's why your people's skin get clear. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they they their energy is more focused. They can work for longer hours. It, at least I can. Yeah. And that's why you don't need as much sleep because you're not putting your body through this hormonal chaos. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I did a good enough job explaining that, but I hope that was better. That was beneficial. That's yeah. That's good. And, and the first year, the first year I went keto, man. You know, we made most money ever. Mm -hmm. And correlation is not necessarily causation, but you know, I was able to put in more work. Yeah, I was able to, to work harder and like better. Yeah. When I was doing it. So. What are some of like, the best keto foods? You know, it, it's you. I like you know obviously avocados. You can um, you, you want high fat foods like macadamia high fat maybe. foods. Macadamia nuts are great. Uh, coconut, coconut oil, MCT powders, uh, you know, uh, ribeye is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I mean, you definitely bacon. You can't eat, you can't eat bacon for sure. Any high fat uh, meats or, but vegans can do keto too. You ever too. try eating this with sauerkraut? Back when I was lean at one point, I would eat um, organic bacon or ribeyes with sauerkraut. Oh no, man, I'm black, man. I never had uh, sauerkraut. Understood. No, I'm just trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like playing, dude. I'm just playing, man. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, but then yeah, no, there's a lot of different foods, but it's really just the macro. The, the, the food choices don't really matter to me that much, right? You might have a, a different stance, and, and, and uh, I'd be interested to, to get your take on that. But it's really just keeping that macronutrient ratio where it needs to be. And then I, I noticed, that regardless of the foods, I get the same results. Got it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. So, where could they get started to learn that? Uh, you know, uh, you can search the internet. You can go anywhere. I have a free ebook. Uh, it's called uh, Keto Cheat Codes. Mm -hmm. KetoCheatCodes.com. Good. It's a good mm. URL, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, another thing too. I mean, we're hitting this at sort of a service level. Yeah. There'll be some people who, you know, they uh, maybe they're vegetarian yeah. or maybe they have a different viewpoint. Vegans, you can do vegan keto. Really? You can do vegetarian keto. You don't even have to eat meat. It's all about the macros. That's why I say it. the food choices are not that important. Yeah. It's important that you hit those those macros. And, and by the way, so. I think a lot of people want to try it. I'm curious myself. Yeah, man. But for anybody who's like, some people are doggedly against any any particular diet, That's right? Cool, so what would you say for somebody who could take value, maybe even not focusing on the aspect of uh, you know keto, yeah. but just how about your? Because I think that either way, whatever diet you mm -hmm. would you would teach, the implementation of the diet, the willpower, the preparation, the planning 
regardless of what someone's diet choice is, they could also learn from that because you have impeccable yeah. that aspect, the implementation. A lot of people will say it's not it's not sustainable or it's not. They, they, they'll argue that well, they, they probably never tried to sustain it or or they can't. I, I've been on keto for over four years, mm -hmm. like as far straight as any diet. Yeah, any diet, like but any implementation of whatever diet you diet. decide you you're gonna like. Yeah. How to implement it? How to implement it? Well, first I would just try it on. Like you don't have to marry a diet. You don't. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just try it on. See how it fits. See how it feels. See if it, see if it's beneficial for you in any regard and then and if it is then then you can find a way to stick to it you know it, it's it's really just comes down to you know being disciplined and making better choices you know you can't just and you know it's instant gratification is the reason why people can't stick to any diet there's a reason people can't stick to anything you know it's not just it's not just this right you know it's it's you have to the choices you make that are like good in the short term are typically bad in the long term and like once you start like thinking about you know how your choices affect you in the long term i think outside even with diets or even outside of diets i think your life would be better as a result i think what gets me is the continual grind and travel and the way that i've reshaped the business in the past year i get to the point where i'm i'm eating healthy food but it's too high carb yeah. and i get to the point where i'm so beat down that the willpower to be strict on that the way I used to be, yeah. I'm just, it's like, I'm, I'm like one of those doctors mm -hmm. where the doctor's helping heal everybody else, but then when it comes time for themselves, they're like, you know, smoking down the cigarette, eating the donut or something. Yeah. In my case, I'll eat things that are that are high nutrient density, that's why I don't sure. get sick, I believe, but I'm not eating the right macronutrient ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say for somebody that would want to implement that, but it's just smash for time? Yeah, uh, you're a unique case. You know, like you're 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 atypical. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I travel I like a lot because I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah, yeah. And you're in the same boat, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I travel. I'm you know once or twice uh, a month. I'm in a different city or country, mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm able to do it. What 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 I, what I do is I plan ahead. You know, like I, I I'll, I'll keep food on me. You know, uh, or snacks or whatever, and and I just figure out how to manage it wherever I go. Like we were out for breakfast the other day, and I, you know, I, I still stay I keto, you know, and I, and I do it every time I eat out, every time I travel. It's like, it's, it's, it's not, for me, it's just not a good enough excuse. You know, it's, it's, it's I think what, if you adapt the mindset that you're gonna do this, you'll do it. You know, like, and, and, and that's cool. Maybe you got other priorities right now. I think that's that hitting totally 40 cool. with a gut, I've got to at some point. Yeah. I got to make it a priority, right? Otherwise, yeah. you're gonna hit the wall. Yeah, it's kind of like that, you know. It's 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 because that because that that same excuse can be used for anything. You just got to decide what you're gonna make a priority. And, and there's different seasons, man. You know, some, there's just times in my life or times in the year where I won't prioritize like my 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 diet as much. Mm. Maybe there's other stuff going on, you know. Maybe that it has to be the priority, mm. but it has to be. It, you know, it depends on what what, 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 your, what, what you know, what you value. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because you can make that that time excuse or that travel excuse really for anything. You know, as as, as a way to to justify not doing it. I'm not saying it's not real. It, for you, I know it is. It's, it's, it's real. hundred percent real. But it doesn't. But it's not an excuse. But like for them, it, you know, for this guy watching, it's probably not. It's probably not real. You know, you're you're one of like. But end of the day, as mm -hmm. I'm teaching self development it's incongruent to be out of shape to some extent. And so that'll be a thing I'll have to do. Yeah, it's gonna, I think, I think, I think your fans would love to, to, to see they you would, go yeah. on that journey, man. Yeah. Like, however, they'll still, however, they'll complain when other outputs get reduced. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to find that middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Why haven't you read a book yet? You know what? Why haven't you done an event <laughs> in Mumbai? And I'm like. You have enough resources <laughs> to just handle that. I do, right, like yeah. somebody could just do it for you. Right, you know, I've seen that with other guys. You know, like uh, my my boy used to be Gary V's trainer, mm -hmm. right? And he trained. Not Jordan, uh, not Jordan. Um, uh, Mike. Cool. You know what I'm saying? And Mike, Mike uh, would just travel with him everywhere, mm -hmm. and he was the one. And, and you're you're absolutely right because I I couldn't pay attention to Gary when he was fat, man. I I, I don't know, and, and that's just me, right? I was like, come on, man, what's this fat boy gonna tell me about anything? You know. <laughs> But that's me being shallow. Yeah. That's me being a shallow uh, person. That's my truth. I just yeah, admit yeah. that. Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> Don't judge me. That's my truth. You know. But when he lost some weight, I was like, oh, now I can pay attention to this okay, dude. See if that's okay. the value. All right. I'm motivated. But that was me. Motivation. I'm motivated. <laughs> I'm motivated. <laughs> I'm motivated. <laughs> finally get, finally get but you, watch my video. You put uh, me on a lot to a lot of stuff, especially uh, in in the the herb space. You know, mm -hmm. and the the micronutrients yeah. that really helped me. In not not only like in, with my health, but also uh, from a, from a energy standpoint and, and just uh, really with entrepreneurship. And I know that's your focus for sure too, like the the, the herbs and the, and the well, he's living and stuff. It. Yeah, man, like I'm in 
into it. This dude's living it. Mm. He's out in the forest and stuff. Yeah? Mm. I'm one of those rare cases that's half in Venice and then the other half literally deep in the woods, no cell service. Can I explain this for a second? Yeah. Please. So what he does, go to, what's your Instagram? It's Black Magic Alchemy. Yeah, Black Magic Alchemy. You'll see this guy, he's out in the forest. Okay, he'll be with a grip of new friends that he's made. A very attractive new friends that he's made. <laughs> yeah, doing a... mushroom hunting. Oh man. They're literally like dude, me too. I'm a me too. I'm a pull up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like this is like my goal is to free up some time to do keto and to go with him with his friends. And so basically, um, it's like on another level. And so basically, like, um, you know, I wanna like he's in the forest, like cut like finding the chaga, cutting it off, and then making brews out of it. I mean that's going for it, you know? I mean, cause you, cause we hang out in LA and then you'll be up in like, oh, like Ojai or like, like in like yeah. Big Sur, like up yeah. the Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah. And I want to go with you sometime. And basically you're up in the forest, you're hunting down the actual mushroom. We were just talking about how much herbs can make such a difference because herbs, ha especially wild ones, have these different macronutrients in them, enzymes. You're getting things like betulinic acid from certain mushrooms, polyphenols. Let's these are- question. I've heard that um, beta glucans from things like reishi, I've heard this, I don't know if it's true, I not want to make a health claim here, please, but I've heard that um, it's actually can create almost an alternative, like a secondary immune system For sure. in the body. Reishi mushroom, chaga, cordyceps, lion's mane, uh, there's probably, you know, yeah. agraricus, all these different yeah. medicinal mushrooms. I've heard that it, they have beta glucans, or at least some of them do, yeah. and I've heard that it can make almost a secondary immune system right in the body. Yeah. So here's what we don't consider. can make a claim here. For sure, yeah. You no claims to make a claim. I'm just saying I heard that. Yeah, the immune system. So when we take certain foods, we think, okay, we're gonna take some dandelion root, maybe for our liver. We, we associate certain organs. The immune system's a non-local system. There's not any one part the immune system exists in. It exists in the entire aspect of the body. Okay, so what herbs do is they promote the immune system. They nourish the immune system. Now, no claims, of course. The thing you wanna consider is, what's the quality of the foods you're taking first off? Are they organic? Um, are you mixing foods properly? Like Owen brought up sauerkraut, like that's a huge thing for actually your microbiome and keeping like your proper probiotics in there. But herbs are that secret hack that I got into because I was already doing all the organic foods. I was trying, I went everything from vegan, raw vegan, I've done paleo, I've tried so many different diets and I started realizing, I feel like there's just one last little thing that if I could just bring this in, it could enhance the whole structure. That's when I learned about medicinal mushrooms and things like beta glucans in mushrooms. That when you get those in your body, they're almost like this weird, it's like a cheat code. It's like, I could almost make the URL of this soon. <laughs> <laughs> Having herbs and mushrooms, and when I say herbs, I'm thinking of things like maca root. You probably heard of that one. You've heard of things like- Maca root for our fans would be especially good. Yes. Okay? Yes. It really uh, increase your motivation to get out there. You know the vibes. Mm. Peruvian soldiers would literally take it before war. Mm. Consider that. Mm. So very just say that if you were if you were an adult film and you wanted to finish strong, <laughs> maca. maca root. Yeah. The yellow kind. <laughs> There's different mm. kinds. So the whole the whole key is this with herbs, well, you can infuse this into any diet. That's the fun part, is you can we were talking about putting cordyceps in different coffee blends for keto. You can infuse herbs into so many of these different categories. And I think herbs are honestly the base cheat code. For all the diets I've ever tried, as soon as I started adding in things like superfoods, super fruits, started getting those beta glucans from mushrooms, that's when the whole thing went up. That's when your brain starts really functioning. Because now you're getting all those nutrients you can't get from the depleted soil that's going on, especially in America. The soil just doesn't have the same nutrient content as it once did. It's a scary concept, by the way. Yes. They've tested food from the 1930s compared to now. A carrot, just as an example, would have 10 times more nutrients in 1930 before the Dust Bowl than it did now. And it would have been heirloom too. It would have been heirloom. There would have been no hybridization, genetic modifications, as well as soil needs to be churned over. When you keep planting the same food, monocultures like corn or carrots in the same field year after year, the soil depletes itself of nutrients. So you're basically eating empty food. There's no real nutrient there. That's why it's very key to eat organic and best yet biodynamic, which we're gonna start seeing soon. But herbs are that little secret hack that if you're not always able to eat organic, you're traveling a lot. If you're getting those super herbs in there, ashwagandha, shaga, reishi, lion's mane, some of the mass mushrooms, ginseng. If you're getting that in there, you're able to make up for those areas that you're lacking from not getting the nutrients from your food. Talk about going out in the bush. Oh yeah, sure. Cause we're, cause we're gonna come. Yeah. We're on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I challenge everyone who does paleo, everyone. When we're talking about the idea of going back to nature, going back to how did our ancestors once live before mass manufacturing and industrialization occurred. So I encourage you go into the forest and you can go to uh, 
there's so many forests even around LA, LA, wherever you are, even Central Park. I'm actually gonna be foraging in Central Park in it New is. York, yeah. There's wild mushrooms growing out there. There's red belted polypores, rich with beta glucans, trichirpenes. There's foods all around you and there's a lot of documentaries. There's a lot of cool YouTube channels. I would just recommend look up wild foraging and then pick whatever area you're in, whether it's Missouri, it's Ontario, wherever. You're gonna be shocked how many things you walk by every day and you're like, I could eat that wintergreen leaf. Now don't just pick it up and eat it right away. Like identify it properly, use the right books, but it's incredible when you do go wild foraging and you can add that into any diet you're taking. There's always an herb that can be infused in. How did you make your, my favorite product from you is the black magic. How did you yeah. make that? Yeah, so how we make that is we take wild chaga that we actually have to go wild forage because you can't grow this in farms or labs. Wild chaga from Ontario. I was born in Toronto, so it's north of the city. We go deep into the woods and we go looking for this mushroom that only grows on one in every 1,000 birch trees. It's very rare. It's more rare than truffles. You can't train a dog or a pig to find it. You have to find it. So usually it takes a few hours to find it and it can grow up to 50 years old. It grows massive on the side of living birch trees. And when you forage it, it's these yellow and gold colorations inside, but pure black on the outside. Almost looks like a tumor on the tree. Some people don't think it looks beautiful. I love it. And the crazy thing about this mushroom, they're starting to do studies and research on it and figuring out it's very similar to reishi, which has the most clinical studies on an herb ever done. Over 5,000 clinical research studies. Shaga's got beta glucans, trichirpenes, and most of all, the most important part is melanin what gives our skin color, our eyes color, and it's the nutrient, it's an antioxidant, it's very hard to produce, Shaga provides you, and it goes for the pineal gland. And this is the interesting part about Shaga, why I got into it and why I made this product, Black Magic, that has Shaga in it, is because when you actually nourish the pineal gland, which is usually not functioning in most people because of fluoride in the water, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, when you get Shaga in there and you provide that direct dose of melanin, when you get that direct dose of sunlight as well, you're also triggering it, the pineal gland actually turns on. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about the ideas of like high vibration. It's the idea of where your peripherals almost expand. You get this sense of awareness, this sense of, you can almost feel your thoughts versus others. You become very intuitive with your own gut feelings. You can start to realize what's a thought versus what's a feeling. The pineal gland is that very psychedelic, although Shaga is not psychedelic in any way, but it is almost psychic in a way. You, you become very in tune with yourself. And I think the goal is really when you look at any health diet, when you look at any purpose of why even take herbs, why take superfoods, why go to the gym, because you want to feel good. You, everyone just wants to feel good. So why not take something that grows in a northern forest that actually has the nutrient in it that could maybe support the most important gland in the brain that's overlooked, which is the pineal gland. And when you support it, that's why we have people buying year after year. They're loving it because they've never found a food quite like it that's honored the right way we do it. So we talk about when we find the mushroom, we harvest just a small amount, we sun dry it, we extract it for over a year in alcohol, we evaporate that alcohol off and infuse it in hot water with seven other herbs, juniper, sarsaparilla, wintergreen, all these ancient herbs. So when people take this dose, they've never quite had a food that isn't this in, that isn't industrialized because most of what's in the superfood section and super herbs, it's super industrialized, it's coming from factories, it's mass produced. They're not getting something that's artisan handmade. There's really something to that idea of artisan handmade. So that's why I think Owen really enjoys it because you know Owen and I, I'm sure you as well, we're all, we're supplement junkies in a lot of ways. We want to feel a certain effect from our foods. Yeah. I was. I want to be indestructible. It, literally. I want to evolve. I want to transcend what's normal for a human. I want to be able to pull things and just channel it right through. And that's why I fell in love with Shaga because it can do that. It can provide that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, ultimately with diet, whether this is brand saying, Shade or myself, always listen to the government, the FDA. We're just giving some thoughts, just different random thoughts. It's not medical advice. You should always just eat whatever the government tells you to. <laughs> and just eat exactly what the government tells you to and follow the FDA, okay? The so pyramid. yeah, yeah, the food pyramid, these were just sort of like, kind of just like general opinions. We're not medical doctors. So let's be clear about that, okay? Basically, I'll combine um, the following things, okay, for my own thing. So clearly, I've gotten overweight. I'm like the doctor that's helping everybody else. Like I started helping myself. I've actually been as low as 6.4% body fat. And I, you know, I followed paleo, uh, Mark Sisson, Primal Blueprint. You seem to have taken it to another level. And I followed that and had incredible results. I, I loved when I did that. And I, I got to get back to it. And I promise I will if I'm around long enough to do so, which I hope I am. And that means soon. Now, I never take anything for granted. So going from there, um, some habits that I have maintained though, even as I've gotten more chubby, is number one, I try to get vitamin D in there every day. I read great things about vitamin D. My friend's mother very, very sadly passed away from cancer and he, and he tested her blood 
on all these different things. And he said that her blood was always better um, when he, she was taking vitamin D. Now you have to get that from sun. I'm fair skinned, so I can get burnt very easily. Okay, I also take ax, ax, tan, tan, ax, ax, tan, yeah. What is it? You probably actually said it correct there. You said ax, tan, yeah. Okay, so that's actually the antibiotic, or sorry. <laughs> no, uh, that would be the, um, the antioxidant, I think that's kind of you see in salmon, it makes it kind of pink. And they say that can help with your skin if you're getting some sun. I also, if I get sun, I just try to get it in the morning when I get up. And oftentimes, I don't even know if this works. Like, and I'm serious when I say I don't know if this works, but I'll just put my feet in the dirt, yeah. maybe lean up against a tree and I'll cover my face. Cause I feel like the face will get wrinkled the fastest as well as up through here, you know, like it's gonna hit you right in there. So generally, I mean, this is an exception, I'm on a boat, but generally I'll kind of cover that and get a little bit of sun every day, maybe 10, 12 minutes, maybe 20, whatever, earlier in the morning, leaning up against a tree, feet in the dirt. Some people think that that creates grounding effect. I don't know, but if I'm gonna sit out there anyway, might as well do it. I also feel that whether it truly worked or not, you're nice and relaxed. Who doesn't like to put their feet in the dirt, you know, in the morning sun, read a book for 10, 12 minutes to start your day. Then what I do- Black people or people of color, mm -hmm. we, you need, to, you should probably supplement with some uh, vitamin D. I heard because, that. Um, our skin doesn't absorb it as much, right? And I, it was it was basically made to be outside all day, mm -hmm. you know, probably next to the equator, right? Yeah. So like, it, 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 you probably don't live like that, especially in New York in the wintertime. So it's really important for people of color to supplement uh, with that vitamin, vitamin D. D. Yeah, yeah you're, you not gonna get crazy. Get enough, you're not gonna get enough sun. Crazy, 12 right? minutes is not so, enough. So, our, our, some, our skin was made to be in yeah. the sun all day. So pro if I'm guessing, I would mm -hmm. guess that, that you and I are probably more likely to get skin cancer, like a, like a skin tumor, and then you're probably more likely to get a vitamin D deficiency. Really? That'd be my best guess, but I don't, who yeah, knows? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. just guessing. Follow now, the government's diet. Yeah, whatever they tell you. <laughs> okay. And going from there, um, probiotics, I crank down really good kombuchas. I'll make my own kombucha, really fun. Um, I also do- hold up, hold up. Um, Make your own kombucha? Yeah. yeah. Go on that. Want All me to right. talk about that? Okay. Mm. So I'll take the very best quality green tea and white tea. Gyoko or green tea, silver needle white tea. And I'll put in raw honey, which is, it's actually harder to brew because it brews better with black tea yeah. and with uh, raw um, sugar. Yeah. But I'll put in honey to get the benefits from that. I do that. It's a little bit tricky. It can go moldy more easily the way I do it. But if you can get it right, it's amazing. And then in the end, I'll put in raw fruit for the second fermentation. And I mean, this is like literally the food of the gods. And tell them about the mother, like the actual SCOBY itself. Yeah, the SCOBY is, is a bacteria that, that actually, it eats the sugar. And support, my understanding, what I read is that it eats the sugar and it eats the caffeine. Yeah. So you're getting all of the antioxidants from the teas, like ECGC, um, is it ECGC? Yeah, all these like, like flavonoids, polyphenols. Um, you're getting probably certain good aspects from the honey, the raw honey is supposed to be a superfood yeah. and then you're also getting um you know the fruits in there yeah. but you're eating all the sugar out of it yeah. and you're yeah it, apparently what i read is that you're even eating the caffeine out of it yeah. so i'll do that i also do wild blueberries from this company called wyman's i think it is uh -huh. and i'll crank that down because if you eat wild blueberries it makes your mouth blue yeah. because it has more antioxidant in it then i do ginger shots turmeric shots green juice or green salads. I sleep in a pitch black room. This will shock you. Yeah. Literally a pitch black room where I'll get garbage bags, thick, thick garbage bags from Home Depot, the big ones. And then I'll use blue tape, which is painter's tape, so it doesn't rip the walls apart. Yeah. And then I sleep in literally, I even cover the doors with this. Pitch black room, so I get a really deep sleep. I do meditation. I do chiropractor. Some people think that that, people have mixed opinions on that, but they think it aligns the spine for better um, better health. Yeah. I also do cryotherapy. I do banya where I'm sweat, 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 then jump in a cold plunge. Here in New York, we have Russian Turkish baths. In LA, they have some, it's called a Russian bond. You can also do Korean spa. Some people believe that that detoxes you as you sweat out. I also do infrared sauna, which I have at home. So I'll, I'll chill and read in my infrared sauna or work in it. And then also I'll go to the banya. Yeah. Okay. Then I do cryotherapy for cold. Look that up. They put you in this like cold fridge thing, but I also just love the cold plunge. I can sit in the cold plunge for like five, 10 minutes. I go with Julian, I go with my friends whenever I'm in, you know, in town. And I do that. And between all the, you know, I do eat too high carbs, but between the vegetables, berries, ginger shots, turmeric shots, you know, sub, you know, different supplements that, you know, you would take herbal stuff, um, grass fed beef, um, you know, super duper deep sleep, proper vitamin D intake, probiotics, and also, I really believe that, you know, we made a video out here earlier about being in a high vibration state. I personally, I think that that makes a difference, but again, it's just opinion and you always gotta just trust what the government says, but I think just as like a random opinion, yeah. um, I think that helps. So doing that, 
yeah, I haven't been sick since 2012. Even when I've run on horrible sleep, yeah. I'm on bad, I haven't been to bed yet. I can run on horrible sleep on the road. I'm teaching, going, having everything under the sun coming at me and still haven't got sick. I know what's gonna happen. I hate that I keep saying that I haven't got sick since 2012 because I feel like at some point I'm gonna get sick and then I'll be like, I don't get sick much. And they're like, since 2012, I'm like, nah, I got sick. So I should probably stop stunting with that. But um, I, I don't know which of those things is the exact thing that's helping me, but I know it's gotta be something. And here's the best part. I used to get sick 10 times a year. So I'd be getting sick and coming off one thing and going on to the next. So that was really crazy. So between these ideas of just generally, maybe some of the stuff I just covered, Brandon with keto or his execution and discipline in general, if you have a different type of diet, between what Shane is covering, I feel like we covered some good breadth there. And it really is about peak performance, right? So a guy named Dave Asprey, and he really actually started creating that movement of peak performance tied to nutrition. And whether you like his stuff or not, that's up to you. But I love the general mindset of that peak performance. And I think that it goes everything from spiritual growth, getting better results, and just having more fun. So I think it's awesome. Hopefully that gave you kind of a quick little tutorial. Any other thoughts? Uh, you know, whatever you do, you don't have to do like you, obviously you don't have to do keto. You can do anything. It, it doesn't matter. It's like long. It's like how do you feel, mm -hmm. right? I don't even like looking at the studies and stuff because you never get a study that says oh 100 percent of the yeah. people got this result. If there were outliers and maybe it's you, right? So I encourage you to just try different things and try it on and see how it feels and and, and how you respond. You know, mm -hmm. just take take some of the stuff that we said and just, and see if it, if you notice an improvement or not. And if you do, man, then uh, you know, see if you can maybe that's 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 for you. You know, epic. Yeah. And then I love your point too about like I love your discipline and the fact that you're proactive. That's my main key is that you're being so proactive, right? You, you write down, you measure and test. Yeah. And then what I like with you is that you get out into nature and you make food as a part of enjoying life. I love that. Yeah, I think health, health is fun. You know, like all these things like going to the Russian bath, going to the sauna, like go with your friends. Get on, it's like, lifestyle. yeah, we're literally, we're getting our vitamin D it's and we're out here just having a good time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Probably a little too much. Okay, bringing people into the woods. It's like, all of this can actually be fun. Like health is actually fun and simple. Like going to the Air One tonic bar, going to the Whole Foods elixir, I don't know, Air, yeah. Whole Foods even have one, but going there with friends, like that can be a whole thing. So that, that it can be a very enjoyable experience. It doesn't have to be, I, I like actually having the hardcore calculation as well as like juxtapose in there. Also having like just such a fucking good time with it. Yeah. Epic, epic. Thanks guys, yo, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you've been asking for a health-based video for a while. I hope that gave you a quick summary. I'll be happy to offer a bit more. And I uh, just wanna thank you for being here. Hopefully it helps you out. Peace.